Hello and welcome to our next video on multiplying expressions. Here we're going to move beyond, I think, your typical FOIL type problems. We're going to go way beyond that. So here's the land of FOIL and we're moving past that. So this is us, right? We're going past all that stuff. And what I mean is, let's look at products like 2x plus 3 and then not multiply it by something with two pieces but more than that. So say 2x squared plus 3y plus, let's say, minus 4, plus 3y minus 4. How do you do this? Well, this, you know, this is just another example of the distributive property. And the perspective that might really help you is to remember that what you're doing is multiplying each of these pieces in this first term by each of these pieces here, right, in this second term. And you want to do that for every pair. So then you also want to do that for this three, and then all of these pieces, and that's it. Your goal is to multiply every piece. And if you do that, you'll have the right answer. So how do we do this? Well, first, 2x times 2x squared. That's our first pairing. Okay, so I've got this and that. Then 2x and 3y. So 2x and 3y. And then 2x and negative 4. So it's 2x times negative 4. And then we want to deal with the other pieces here. 3 times 2x squared. So 3 times 2x squared. And then 3 times 3y. 3 times, oops, 3 times 3y. And then 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12. And that's it, right? So we've paired up all the pieces, and now it's just a matter of simplifying. So here we have 2x times 2x squared. What's that? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. x times x squared, laws of exponents, is x to the third power. Here, 2 times 2 is 6. x times y, well, we don't know, it's xy. Here, we're adding, so, but here we have 2 times negative 4, so I'm going to write negative 8, and then times x. Here we have 3 times 2, which is 6, and then x squared. Here we have 3 times 3, which is 9. And there's still a y, and then that minus 12. Now the order I would choose here, I would, I would put 4x to the third power, largest power, and then follow it with this one. So we get this one. 6x to the second power. And then, well, it's debatable here, but I think minus 8x would be nice. And then plus 9y and then plus 6xy, and then minus 12. So, I mean, your, your goal to make this as neat as possible really is to try and put the, ex, the exponents, uh, the, the variables with the highest exponents first, and then work your way down. But really, this is just a, a formality, I think, in writing the correct order. Um, here, 6xy, I wasn't sure, should I put it before the x and the y or after? I could have easily also put it in here as well. So that's just one example of, let's say, a 2 by 3. We can just expand this, right? I could make this term right here have 20 pieces. It would be a really long product, right? The goal would still be the same. Multiply each piece in the first term by each piece in the second. Let's look at another example. What if I had, I don't know, and again, we're making this up, 3x plus 2y plus 1. That's not fun. Plus 4 times negative 3x plus uh, y minus 2. Here we have two terms, each is three pieces. So you might know right away we're going to have nine combinations, right? This piece, 3x, we want to multiply it by each of these. Let's work that out. So we get 3 times negative 3x. Then we have 3x times y. Then we have 3x times negative 2, so negative 6x. Okay, keep going. Now this piece is next. 2y by each of these. 2y times negative 3x, we get, so it's 2y times negative 3x. 2y times y, so it's 2y times y. And 2y times negative 2, so it's 2y times negative 2. And then last we have... Let's change color here. 4 times each of these pieces. So it's 4 times, you see how this is, it gets really long, negative 3x. 
and then we have 4 times y. And then we have 4 times negative 2, which I'll just write as negative 8. And now I want to simplify all of this. Um, so here we have 3 times negative 3x, it's negative 9x, right? But I made a mistake. Oh boy, right from the beginning. Look at that. 3 here times negative 3x. It should be 3x times negative 3x. So we can fix that. 3x times negative 3x. So this is negative 9x squared. And I just, just to point out, I knew I was wrong. And, you know, um, when you're working through these problems, it's easy to lose track. But I knew it was wrong because I knew we had at least two x's being multiplied. So I was like, why wasn't I getting an x squared here? So I knew I was missing something. I wanted that x squared. Next we have, well, 3xy, that one's done, okay, minus 6x, that one's also simplified. Here we have 2 times negative 3, so it's negative 6xy, that one's done. 2y times y is, is 2y squared. 2y times negative 2 is minus 4y, right, 2 times negative 2. 4 times negative 3x is negative 12x. Then we have a 4y, and I almost got on one line. Well, oops. 4y, and then minus 8. And if you can simplify, something here we can really combine except for this. Negative 12x, negative 6x, and then negative, and then 4y, right? and negative 4y, well that's exciting, they, they'll cancel out. So here, think about, you know, when you're doing this next step of simplifying or canceling, don't get confused with all the negative signs here. You could think of all of these different terms as being added. So we're adding negative 4y, and then later we're adding 4y. When you look at it in terms of addition, you might see how they cancel out. These two are opposites. Here, negative 12x and negative 6x, that's negative 18x, right? Oh, and here we can cancel out more. Negative 6xy and 3xy. If you add negative 6 and, and 3, you get negative 3xy. Okay, those two are simplified. These two are simplified. Negative 8 still kind of hanging out there. And we still have 2y squared and then negative 9x squared. So there we go negative 9x squared plus 2y squared minus 3xy minus 18x minus 8. And we're done. We've simplified. And again, this last step of canceling out, I was just saying to clarify, for example, in this piece right here, it says 3xy minus 6x. You can think of that as 3xy plus negative 6x. I only say that because, well, first of all, they're equivalent. But I think it's easier to see how terms can combine when you're adding. Adding is very flexible. You can change the order. Uh, you can you can group them in different ways, right? The associative and commutative properties. And when that happens, you can see you have, here you have a negative 6x, and here you have a negative 12x. So you're adding a negative 12x. So when you combine these two, it's like adding negative 12x and negative 6x, and that's why you get negative 18x. I think it's harder to see that at the beginning, and especially difficult to see when you only have subtraction or negative signs here. Don't be afraid to write more signs in, especially when they're addition. It helps simplify. All right, so I hope this helped. Thanks.